Today, I'm very grateful I am able to make a video like this, and that is because we have a new book recently released in the last couple of hours, solely focused on Palantir Foundry and its use cases. You'll see here a very industrial looking cover. So today, I want to give a look into the first two sections of this book and recommend it to you, but also highlight some key details about Palantir Foundry and help everyone better understand the product, because there are so many people that complain about not not being able to understand Palantir. Well, here you go. That's what this video is for. So here we are, Palantir Foundry by Use Cases, an introduction to contour, reports, fusion, and recipes in Palantir Foundry. But first, let me say, if you're interested in picking up this book, there is a link in the description. I highly recommend it. It is on the pricier end at $39, but this is self-published by the author right here. And I went ahead and acquired it for myself on July 14th because I think it is so important to be able to understand Palantir and Foundry, especially being the main flagship product. So being able to acquire this book for way less than 1% of my Palantir position. Just as a form of my own due diligence and research, I feel is well worth it. So go ahead and pick this up if you would like to support the author in the description below. So here we go. Any descriptions of Palantir product and services functionalities reflect the author's impressions that have not been verified. This is not a book by Palantir themselves. So Kai is an IT specialist at a large aircraft manufacturer. And if we do a quick LinkedIn search, and here we are on LinkedIn, you'll see Airbus us right there, but also in his description here, an expert developer and trainer for Palantir Foundry with special focus on presentation layer. So being a system architect a digitalization specialist for four years. And moving along, so the introduction here, Palantir Foundry offers a rich set of information analytics, data management and transformation, data visualization, modeling, no-code, low-code application development, and digital twin functions. This book focuses on a small subset of the self-service elements of Foundry, mainly contour, reports, fusion sheets, and recipes to enable business data analysts from document-centric work, typically in spreadsheets, and towards data-centric work. The focus is not on the presentation of the syntax of the functions, but rather on the way of thinking to solve problems, i.e. typical combinations of contour widgets, paths, and processes that can be applied to various use cases. The description of the pattern is wrapped in use cases taken from a manufacturing enterprise. The frame story of the book is built around a small manufacturing company, which I'm not going to butcher that name, that introduced Palantir Foundry in order to transition into a data-driven company. And a little bit of a thank you to his colleagues at Airbus, Benjamin here, a specialist for Skywise for supply chain, product, and implementation. Definitely some important support on this book. So here's the table of contents just to have a look for yourself. Introduction, we'll get into Foundry core concepts and the story setting, but I'm not going to get any farther than that today, but definitely will in the future. We got Contour there, and then Section 4 coming up. This is a very uh, comprehensive book right here. Advanced Contour, and then, oh, I went past it. Scheduling for 5, Historization of Data is, is Section 6, and 7 is the Outlook on Slate. And then we've got a conclusion there. Opening up with a quote here, the answers you get depend upon the questions you ask, and I think that is a very perfect quote to open up a book on Palantir, because Palantir is about the human and artificial intelligence symbiosis. Using Foundry instead of a classical relational database system changes the way solutions are built. In a classic database environment, there is a clear separation between the data and the business logic. Working with Foundry changes this way of working. So here we are on to the second chapter, and this is what I'm going to focus this video around. Foundry is built to work with data, or rather information, but is much more than just a database server with some nice features for handling data at large scale. For the efficient use, some basics around data sets, transformation, and general architecture have to be understood. This section starts with a brief overview of the Foundry architecture for readers that have never had contact with Foundry before. Central elements like the data set and transformation of databases are introduced afterwards. A brief overview of the organization of data from an end user perspective is added and finally the sample enterprise is described. To ease the transformation from the book's content to a real scenario, the book uses a set of data around a small virtual manufacturing company. And that is really the value proposition of this book. We get to see how a small company, and yes a small one, I'll get to that a little later, is actually using Foundry. That's what I am most excited to see throughout this book. Palantir Foundry is a place for integrated analytics and operational decision making. The functions of Foundry are built around a data lake containing data 
data that is structured in tables and unstructured binary or text data. Foundry installation is hosted in a server environment and accessed via a browser or for connected systems with direct calls to the API, API being application programming interface. In comparison to cloud systems like Google Workspace or Office 365, where Google or Microsoft controlled tools access the corporate data, Foundry installation is, or can be, completely segregated from the Palantir environment. In the classic setting, the data is continuously fed from third-party systems into Foundry or fed from operational decisions or modeling inside of Foundry. This process of feeding data from a third-party system is called ingestion. That's definitely a key word to hold on to. The result of a single ingestion is typically a data set. After an ingestion took place, the target data is updated. The update of a data set is an event that can trigger various actions in Foundry. Foundry provides various functions that range from basic analysis to complex processing like machine learning algorithms. Palantir Foundry not only functions to process data, but as well functions that allow the user to create new data or extend ingested data with manually entered information. This manually added data is added as well to the data lake. Unless the lineage of data is examined, the user does not see any technical difference between ingested, processed or manually created data. Here we have a nice image right here, the visualization layer looking just at a search bar onto the object layer, or we have some storage and, and data analysis or uh, transfer transformation, I should say, on the side here, going to the transformation and analytics engine there, data sets coming back and forth. This whole thing is Palantir Foundry, which gets read via an API to a third party system. Labeled the schematic overview of Palantir Foundry for elements re uh, relevant in this book. Foundry becomes rather a data hub instead of a passive data storage. The central element of the foundry to store data is the data set. A data set is storage for data that is structured in rows and columns, i.e. a table, as you'll see right there. The transformed data can be stored as a new data set to allow further transformations for usage in visualizations or further processing. In comparison to relational databases, it is not possible to spontaneously edit the contents of data set. There is no data set editor that allows the modification of a value in a given column and row. Data sets are read only, but Foundry offers some mechanism to allow creation of data sets from sources that are editable. Foundry Fusion is a spreadsheet application inside of Foundry. Any areas of a fusion sheet or entire sheets can be synchronized to a data set. Edits in the cells of a synchronized sheet area are automatically synchronized to the linked data set. The features to allow the creation and write back of user created data inside of Foundry are key levers to use the foundry as a central hub for decision making and to operational management which we've heard so often from Palantir management themselves. Foundry provides a comprehensive set of applications to transform, visualize, and manage data. This book covers the subset of applications that are typically used by data analysts to implement small to medium use cases. Very important. Palantir Foundry can be set up in various development and usage strategies. One degree of freedom in the development is the level and population to which the self-service is enabled. A user that opens only predefined reports or applications applications and uses these only in the foreseen manner acts as a reader. Users that use the Foundry to create new analyses and applications act as editors. The level of self-service is mainly determined by the number of users that can act as editors. So moving on to the example that is being used for the book, the small company here, they produce their products in batches to reduce tooling time and each batch produces a defined set of products of a given model. And this is an example here. From the planning tool, the data is ingested as a table into Foundry. The data is available in the typical form of storing planning data in a table. So here we have some nice examples of that just to see, just to get an idea of what the product is and in that's Foundry right there. The invoices are done using a small ERP solution. So that's why Foundry is necessary or a good choice for this small company. Any kind of reports, analysis, and prognosis about the business shall be built by the employees themselves. Being as well a platform for professional development by classic IT companies, the Foundry will be able to scale with the business. Is one of Palantir's many growth mechanisms, and I think that's huge. That is very underrated. Already, a very small company setting consists of multiple data sources from which some of them cannot be connected on data level without significant effort. So that is worth keeping in mind. So here it is once this company Company logs in what they see on the home page. Within a target folder in use cases, a right mouse click opens the context menu and a plus new analysis is selected to create a new analysis. Here we have a lot of nice images. 
You can pause the video if you want to stop and look at them or buy the book and you can just flip through them on your own time. But for the sake of keeping this video moving, I will continue. To illustrate which product performed best, a pie chart will be added to the analysis and later to the report. The chart is added as well to the report that updates automatically. So we're seeing a lot of ways for Foundry to make reporting very easy and manageable. Continuing on, we see the report is now shared with the CEO and he will get a notification about the sharing. These charting tools are like Excel on steroids pretty much. And that's just one segment of Foundry. Foundry has a browser-based user interface. I think that's very important for keeping some continuity between anyone that is using different elements of a piece of software. A well-maintained set of favorites and bookmarks can speed up the work in Foundry significantly. So there you have it. And now is section three. So you see, I sped through that pretty fast. We're 10% uh, into the book, even after the first two chapters. So there's so much still to get to. I do not want to do a whole read aloud for this book. So again, I recommend if you're interested in this, which I think every Palantir shareholder be, read it along with me over these next few days and weeks and I will make some updates if I find other interesting information about contour report reports and the rest of it and perhaps I'll do a conclusion summary video thanks for watching I hope you learned a lot more about Palantir Foundry through this short video until next time